<laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about the serious nature of these people have gone so insane. Check this out. You've probably already seen it. You, you probably heard a lot about this. George Washington statue is covered in a burning American flag before being toppled by up to 40 Portland protesters in Oregon. And I think they got to look at this. These genocidal colonists. Yep. Uh, and 1619. Then, uh, there it is. F cops, mm -hmm. 1619 spray yep. painted on the statue. Ooh, that makes me mad. And that's exactly the point. 1619 is fake news. Yep. It's that addiction, the desperate attempt to get more recognition, to get retweets, to get comments. Win prizes. Win, yeah, win prizes, she man. Win prize, yeah. So the 1619 thing is they're, they're, they're literally trying to argue that the U.S. is a slaveocracy, that the country was founded. It's, in, it's true inception was 1619 when the first slave came. And that is such insane BS. Yep. Because there's so many points at which you can claim the real country emerged or whatever. But the founding fathers were, for one, a product of their time. Mm -hmm. And many of them opposed it. That's they true. I, I think many of them didn't do enough and they, and they, and they uh, compromised for sure. Mm -hmm. And there's no defense for slavery. But we, they laid the groundwork for something important that helped uh, get rid of this. And then there were a bunch of really famous abolitionists who used that framework to win and, and justify their positions. But these, the issue here with George Washington being toppled over is that I think with this addiction, we've, I think it was Jordan Peterson who pointed this out. We know when the right goes too far. Yep. We don't have a point at which the left has gone too far. It's, and it seems like they're trying to find that. I mean, where, this is, where it, it is. man. Yeah, I think we've reached it. I agree. This is insane. You know, the problem is the left owns the cultural institutions. Yep. You're right. It's really funny when I, when I tell, uh, my, like a lot of my regular normie friends this they're like what are you talking about Donald Trump's the president and I'm like what is what, what can what has Trump gotten done uh, Barack Obama created created DACA under executive order okay and then Trump tried repealing it under executive order and they said he can't do it it's illegal mm -hmm. it's like so Obama can make it through executive but what <laughs> does yes, that make sense? makes sense no it doesn't so they, they write their arguments they try to justify it but I'm like listen man I get that Trump's the president that's 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 legit I mean that gives him a lot of power the Republicans are in the Senate they're not doing anything but come on man the, if, 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 if they can tear down a statue of George Washington and where's uh, where's Don Lemon? Where's Chris Cuomo? Hmm. Why isn't a single Democrat coming out and saying destroying the, the, the visage of our first president is wrong? Right. They hate it. They, because they don't care. Yeah. Because they're 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 addicts and they're like, whatever you say, it's like they're 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 taking their cues from drug addled maniacs who are scratching their faces off. Yep. So this is where it gets even crazier. Look, I get it, man. Look, you get a bunch of dumb kids. They're going to tear down some statues. All right. We can, we, can, we can say, oh, okay, okay. The kids are playing a dumb game. They're addicted. They're on social media. But it really does reach that, that, that crazy point right here. NY City Council members call for Thomas Jefferson statue to be removed from City Hall. That's not the kids anymore. It's not the kids anymore, man. No, it's not. The drug addicts are now in our government. So let me, let me ask you something. Based on that, the conversation, so uh, for those that may be just popping into the segment, the gist of it was that people use their phones way too much, creating an addiction, and they constantly have to tweet things to one-up themselves to, to satisfy that addiction. So their rhetoric gets more and more extreme until they're tearing down statues and screaming for revolution. And it makes no sense. This is, this is why nothing they fight for makes sense. It's why they're always eating each other and contradicting each other because it's just an addiction to get something. Right. But, but not, 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 we have, they have the gist of this mental addiction and how it's withering away their brains and their prefrontal cortex. Could you imagine if we created a government where one party was just completely meth addled and one party was just like regular working class people? No, I can't. You'd have a bunch of drug addled people being like, I don't know. I think we got to raise taxes because I need meth. You know what I'm saying? Like we should, we should, we should, we should knock down the statues. We should melt them down and sell it because I need meth. You'd be like, dude, those things won't help us. That's destroying our country. But you have a large portion of people all scratching and, you know, demanding drugs. No, they wouldn't say that. They would be going and, and taking the lobbying money like, oh, yeah, that, well, I'm, I'm fighting for this. I'm fighting for this. But because I just got paid from this person who is paying me a lot of money to fight for what they want. And then you have the like you'd have like Nancy Pelosi and she'd walk into a room and be like, well, you know, the young people really like meth, so we're going to get on our knees and, you know, inject it straight up. Like, just do whatever the young people want. Well, I guess if they're doing it, we should do it, too. That means cool, yeah. Yeah. Just give them what they want because they're desperately trying to win. Yeah. And then they start compromising where Joe Biden's like, you know, the thing with, you know, uh, meth is that, uh, you know, I'll do a little bit, uh, but uh, not too much. 
That's literally what's happening with, yeah. with Biden. Only do it on the weekends. They're, they're compromising like, with, with, you know, like for, for the Democrats to compromise with what these activists represent mm -hmm. would be straight up like them saying, OK, we'll take a little bit of your addiction. Like you're unwell, you're completely ignorant to history and you're violent. Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll incorporate a little bit of that into, uh, into our party. Now, the Republicans are just standing there. I don't know what they're doing. Who knows? Yeah. Their they're their they're probably addicted, too, in the, the other way around. Because if you think about it, we weren't ready for social media, right? We talked about this. Yeah. So government is wasn't ready for social media either. They're all humans. They're all in in social media now. They're, they're seeing these people that are tweeting at them, and they're getting the addiction also from these crazy people that are, like, propping them up. Like, wow, you're our champion. Except... Social media bans the ones who get too addicted. The mm. conservatives who go too far in their addiction get banned. But not on the left. Not on the left. Yeah. Right. So it's, and there it is. Right. Exactly. So we. So what, what, what's happening to the Republican Party is they're kind of just standing around with their thumbs up their bum like they've always been doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never had any any you know, uh, I've I've never cared much for the Republican Party. They've not been involved that group you know in a, in a city that was run by Democrats. Yeah. But the Democrats are increasingly allowed to embrace this insanity. Because the people who run Twitter are, Twitter are the dealers, man. It's true. They're yep. progressive. They're the dealers. And they don't want to ban their own ideas. Mm -hmm. They don't want to ban their friends. Mm -hmm. So they've created this drug addiction, this, this technological addiction that's melting the brains of these people. Yep. And the drug addicts are screaming, ban the conservatives. So they do. Yep. And that, that, that leaves you with, it leaves you with some, some you know, uh, addicted conservatives for sure. But they're kept in check. Yep. They can't go too far. And they know it. So sometimes a conservative will overdose. Someone on the right will, will uh, uh, it's the equivalent of social media ODing. They know how much they can get away with. Like, what's the dosage of spicy memes you can post before you finally come for you and you're done, you're digitally dead? Mm -hmm. So conservatives don't cross that line anymore. The left has no line. They've literally called for violence. They've, th there's actually a Twitter account that was for, for the George Washington statue. A Twitter account gave the address and said, let's go do it. Facebook, there's a, there's someone sent me this picture uh, from Facebook of someone killing a cop with what? a knife to the throat. I was like, what? Did I just see that? Now I, I didn't see it on Twitter or on Facebook myself, so I don't know. But people are like, how is this allowed? What are we seeing? Whoa! Someone, yep. so, you know the we were talking about yesterday the the Antifa fist, right? Yeah. Gripping the snake, mm -hmm. and yep. we we brought it up. It was like, it was actually a Nazi thing, and it's like, look, it's the same thing. Someone posted it on Facebook banned so the so the context for that is you know the gadsden flag it's the coiled snake don't tread on me the far left took the revolution fist which is like this it's the it's actually i believe it's the spanish communist symbol from the spanish civil war okay and now it's been appropriated by a bunch of other leftist groups they put the fist strangling the gadsden snake somebody brought this up to me that there's actually that, that's actually nazi uh, iconography there's a there was a nazi propaganda of an arm strangling a snake and so we were making the point that if they're going to claim Trump's triangle is Nazi, then why aren't they? Right, exactly. Well, Facebook banned Trump and banned the showing the, the comparison of the, the Nazis, the Nazi iconography. Mm -hmm. So they get they get away with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the Democrats are looking at their constituents. And what do they see? Lunatics. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think Trump should not have won in 2016. No, really? Ab absolutely not. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying like he didn't deserve to win. I'm saying that by all statistics and the will of the people, he shouldn't have, except for the fact that social media allows lunatics on the left to get away with whatever they want. So regular people were turned off yep. and it gave Trump the little tiny boost he needed because they mm -hmm. were because he, he did win by a decent electoral margin. Mm -hmm. But there were many states where he won by only a few thousand votes, maybe like seven to ten thousand votes. Wow. Yeah. You get enough people who are on social media or are seeing this stuff and they're just like, these people are insane. That's why I don't believe it today. You know, that, that, that they're, they're saying that Trump is going to lose. I can't, I can't believe it. Maybe it's true. I don't believe it. That he's going to lose. Yeah, we're, we're in a blue state, right? Or blue area. We're in we're, heavy blue. We're like heavy the, we're, blue. Heavy blue. I heavy. walked around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any Democratic signs. I saw Trump signs yep, today around our store, neighborhood. I yeah. saw the bumper sticker. Uh, at the, at bumper the store. Yeah. You see, so you yeah. see, they're out there. I've seen it too. We're, in a, here, we're in a yeah. blue area. I'm really surprised. Listen, Trump listen. supporters, surrounded by <clears throat> Trump supporters. It's like, mm, the area, I don't know. The, the area we are in isn't just a blue area. Okay. It is like this district will never go Republican. Yeah, for sure. Will never happen. Okay. Yeah. 
People and, said but, Trump, Trump would never get elected but that's, president. That, that, that's why I'm saying the, se- the severity of you seeing Trump signs is yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> like, they're not afraid. We're in the Philly suburbs. Yep. Yeah, dude. And there, there are red areas over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very close to Jeff Van Drew, uh, who was a Democrat and turned yeah. into a Republican. Oh, okay, Which right. is another point to be made. He ran as a moderate Democrat and then switched because he saw the, the, the you know, he saw the, the signs. He saw the crazy eyes. He literally it's crazy. signs. The yeah. crazy eyes. <laughs> we're in an area that it's not as bad as, say, Ocasio-Cortez's district, because I think she's D plus 30, meaning, like, that's huge. Yep. But Philly Philly was 82% Democrat voters in the 2016 election. Ooh. Wow. Like, it's not going to happen here. However, if okay. you're seeing Trump signs in this neighborhood... I am. Mm-hmm. I, had a, I had a conversation with a local guy last year, and it was kind of weird because... He was he was an anti-Trump leftist. It was obvious, mm-hmm. but he was he was being polite. Like he lived in the area, and we were talking. We talked for quite some time, and then he started saying things that were very obviously leftist talking points. A lot of it was fake news, and I was very polite. And you have to navigate those things very carefully because I can't just be like, "That's completely wrong." What are you talking about? You believe that libtard? Blah blah blah. Yeah, because you you will trigger their emotional defense system. Exactly. Right. So I just said, I I, I you know I'm I'm tactful and respectful, and I said, "Ah, uh, well." You no, you saw the update on that one, right? That that story about Trump actually it turned out to be this. And then he goes, oh. "Oh, really?" And I was like, "Oh yeah." And I just pulled my phone. I'm like, "Yeah, check it out." He was like, "Oh, it's the best way to do it." But he was talking a, cra- a bunch of stuff about Hillary and Trump being, you know, a Nazi and all this stuff. To and that was that. I mean, dude, we're in a blue. We're in well, this is blue town, man. This is this is like 82 percent the Philly area. And this guy was talking about this to, for for you to now walk around the area, neighborhood and see Trump signs and Trump stickers. Mm-hmm. I can't, you know. Uh, we saw that Trump flag in the middle of the lake. Yes, yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's determination. That's Someone crazy. got into the, so And there, there's no docks or anything. Right, no. like how did they do it? They, they either waded <laughs> out there out, or brought a boat and something. Maybe, Jeez. who it's, knows? I wouldn't even call an, it a lake. Inflatable. I would call it like a, 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 a like scum waste pond. Wastewater, yeah. Yeah, it's like right. a, it's, 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 an, it's, it's a shopping center <laughs> yeah. with, nice. with, with just like <laughs> a small body of water full of trash. And, and somebody found a way to mount a Trump sign in the middle of that thing. <laughs> So yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing rhetoric from the Trump supporters, but I got to tell you, man, you know what? Maybe it's just hubris, but there's a part of me that says when they tore down a statue of Thomas Jefferson, mm-hmm. that was a declaration of war. It feels, on it feels like it. Everything yeah. the average American believes in. Yep. It is these internet drug addicts. They've gone insane. Yep. They think they're the majority, but they're not. They're like one oh, percent of the population. Yep. Man, I, I'd be willing to bet. If you go to any any house in Philly proper, any apartment, yeah, knock on the door, guy comes out. What do you think about Thomas Jefferson? This is Philadelphia. That's true. Thomas Jefferson? Yeah, man. He's all right, dude. Yeah. He's all right. What do you think about Ben Franklin? Yeah, good dude. He's, he's George cool. Washington? Dude, we have the Liberty Bell here, man. Right. <laughs> this is Philadelphia. Yeah. Like this these, is the founding father's the, town. These men wrote the groundwork that opened up civil rights to be had in the future. Whether it was on purpose or not, you want to make, you want to have the argument? Fine. But I was watching this video from from uh, Prager U about Frederick Douglass. Okay. Very cool. And one of his arguments was he's a very very famous abolitionist, born a slave, became free, and he said something about, you know, will the American people have the will to live up to their own constitution? And oh. they, and there were there were pro slavery people who were like, oh, "Harumph." Ah. But he got him. He's like, "I got you. You got to admit it." Yep. It says right there, "We're all equal. Are we or not?" Yep. That was, the, that was the beauty of what the Founding Fathers wrote, whether they intended it or not. And I think they did intend it. I was reading about the rebuttal to the 1619 Project. Okay. Historians actually writing about the attitudes. And I've, I, I looked up a bunch of other sources from before the whole controversy. And they all seem to back up the general idea that although the Founding Fathers were slave owners, many of them detested it. Yep. And so for like Thomas Jefferson, he actually inherited many of them. And then he wrote publicly. He tried to get, he, I believe he did get it banned internationally. He stopped the importing of slaves. And so he was working to do what he could to actually stop it. Yeah. Did he do enough? I'd argue he could have done more. I don't know what it was like back in the 1700s, 1800s. Yeah, but that's that's always the argument. Everyone always thinks that, oh, well, you could have done more. You're, you're, you're someone other than me. I, I don't want to do anything. Right. You can do more. They didn't do more. I'm screeching at you now. It's like that's that's this whole thing that we're, we're screeching is become the norm instead of accountability for your own actions. Well, I, I just mean, look, Thomas Jefferson did a lot of really, really great things. Yeah. Yeah. He was a slave owner and there were abolitionists at the time and there were people who were fighting for freedom. And, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, there could have been more done. 
And I bet a lot of these people out there don't even do the research to know who those people are. Oh, yeah. for, sure. for sure. Absolutely. Like tear down the statues and and and, they, then, they, and then what? They tore yeah. down a statue of a guy who was a staunch abolitionist. Yep. Or, or, I think they defaced it. I don't know if they tore it down. I can't remember the guy's name. I was reading it. It was a bunch of conservatives posting it. And they were saying that people didn't know anything about the statue other than he was a colonist. Mm. And it was like he, he would buy in free slaves and fought really, really hard to end it actively. And they deface it. And it's like, you have no idea what you're talking about, man. Yeah, they don't. They, 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 they're trying to get a statue of Abraham Lincoln torn down. The, the great emancipator. For, you, you, want, you want to criticize Lincoln? It was, the Republicans were 100% anti-slavery. Yep. It was a new party at the time, and they were like, no. Yeah, the Democrats. No. <laughs> the Democrats are the ones that wanted to keep it around. Yeah. You know what's weird about the Democratic it's Party? And the Democrats are the ones trying to get rid of Thomas Jefferson. And get rid of They're the there. Civil Rights Act yeah, in California. What, what's that going on over there? Dude, they want to be tried. able to discriminate again? The Calif it, Democrats what? in California have officially voted to repeal the civil rights legislation. It, it went state. through. Through the assembly. Wow. Now it goes to the Senate. And then, it, and then I guess it'll be, I don't know if it'll be voted on or ratified or however it works in California. But the, the, the assembly Democrats in California, basically their version of the House, yeah. have passed it. 60 to 14. Why, why the would bill, they want to discriminate again? It? That's insane. The bill literally does one thing. What's that? It, strikes through the entire dis uh, non-discrimination legislation of Prop 209. Wow. So I send this to my friends and they're absolutely confused by it because the Democrats know how dumb people are. Mm -hmm. They titled it the Affirmative Action Amendment. Wow. Yep. So I sent it to a friend of mine who lives in California and I said, if this actually gets ratified, I will never set foot in California again. I was like, because I do not want to be made an example of based on my race. And, and they said, but affirmative action, you have to understand. And I said, whoa, whoa, hell, stop, stop. What about affirmative action? Yeah. Did you read the bill? Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, the bill has nothing to do with affirmative action. Right. It literally says the, 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 that uh, it will, you know, this, this, uh, 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 this bill or provision will remove Section 31, Chapter 1 of the Con uh, California Constitution. And then it shows you all the text that will be removed. And it literally says the state shall not, you know, discriminate nor provide pre preferential treatment on the basis of race, color, ethnicity, sex, national origin. That's messed up. They're removing that. Mm. That's, that's insane. That, that is a mirror to the 1964 Civil Rights Act federally. So I sent it to a, one of, a couple, I sent it to a bunch of my lefty friends. Like, I want you to explain this to me. One of them said affirmative action. And when I tried breaking it down, like, no, 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 no. That's just the title of the bill. Did you read what the bill does? Yeah, it, it makes it so that affirmative action is in schools. And I said, no, <laughs> they no, no, no. Have no, no idea what read, read what about. the bill says. Yeah. And they were like, I don't understand what you're saying. It says affirmative action. I'm like, that's the title. Get yeah. past the title. Go Come past on. Can't, the title. You got they're this. not smart enough. Open the book. They can't open the book. Read the book, not the title of the book. Right. Open the book. Read it. Just read the cover. So, I don't. I don't. I have another friend and. We were talking about political ideologies, and I said, the problem with the political compass is that me and everyone I know are left libertarian. The difference is I'm anti-identitarian, and you, co you can't see ideology on a political compass. And so my friend was like, I, I said, because of this, I reject most of the policies of the progressives and the Democrats. We started having a conversation, and I sent them a link to the Ballotpedia bill saying they're revoking civil rights legislation. And they responded with, you know, the thing about affirmative action, and I said, hold on, let me stop you right there. You have to read past the title. Yeah. Right. No <laughs> offense. And then guess what they said next? I don't need to. No, 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 oh, no, no. This one's better than that. Oh, great. Oh, boy. No, it's, it's good. It's better it's, than that? It's, it's, it's good. Okay, oh, good, okay. Good. Oh, geez. What? This is weird. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Yep. Thank oh, that, and I said, that makes oh, me feel goodness. so much better. A little, I, a little glint of hope seriously? in humanity. Right. And I, <laughs> well, because look, not, there, there are good, good oh, natured man. people who are being fed fake news. Yeah. And they don't see this stuff. And so I said, can you explain like what I'm supposed to do in the face of this? And it's like, no, no. And I was like, yeah, now you know why I'm actively resisting these people. Yeah. The Republicans kicked out. Uh, Steve King lost his primary, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They it's like, dude, hard against St him. Steve King tweets about white nationalism and they get rid of the guy in two seconds. Mm hmm. They even, they're being accused now of, of licking the boots of Black Lives Matter because the conservatives are not far right fringe extremists. Yep. They're like mostly moderate at this point. They're still in the bell curve of the average person. They're actually yeah, pretty close to are. the center and moving left. Yeah. yeah. It's, they're, they're, Interesting. 
Hmm. Yeah. And and there's there, there are scary problems with that in that they won't stand up against this, the people tearing down the statues of George Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I, man, I, I would love, you know what I want to do? Here's what I want to do. All smash, right. smash the like button. Um, you guys should smash the <laughs> yes. like button. Also, don't forget we're doing the meme contest later. We didn't mention yes. that. Oh, we haven't. But here's what, here's what I want to do. I would love to pay for any one of these people to go to any one of these places they claim is really, really horrible. I'll, I'll pay for your trip there. I actually proposed this to somebody a long time ago. I said, you know, we were, we were arguing on Facebook about all of these different, different, you know, political issues and places. And I said, I'll tell you what. Have you ever been to any one of these places? And they said, no. And I said, how would you like it if I paid How'd you like to everything go? And, 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 and sent you there? Let me know what you need. If you think you need security, I will hire you security. If you think you want, if you want a camera to film it, I will get someone to film you. And ultimately they back out. Of course. I, had a, I, I have a friend in Chicago who's posting all this crazy stuff about how racist, you know, white people are and just the whole line. And I said, all right, bro. All right, bro. I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Would you want to do a project with me where we walk through K-Town? It's on the south side of Chicago. Immediately stops talk, responding on Facebook. Of course. Immediately just stops responding on Messenger. You know what, you know, you know what would happen if you walked through, like, man, I'm not, I'm not going to mention some of these gangs. But if one of these scrawny, you know, little uh, lefty progressive dudes that I know from Chicago. Yeah. That, I, that I've known for a long time. They know what happens when you walk through that neighborhood. Mm. Let, me, let me tell you a quick story. I, I lived in this. I lived on the South Side. Eventually moved to the suburbs, and I'm skating in the suburb of Glen Ellen. It's good fun. Suburbs way different from the South Side of Chicago, mm -hmm. man. We were rough and tumble. That's night and day different. Night and day. Glen Ellen's Dude. a tiny little spot. Yeah. Glen Glen Ellen is like expensive houses, yeah, suburbs, it's, it's beautiful nice. houses. Right, right by Wheaton. Mm -hmm. My cousin used and, to live there. And uh, and you're you're miles away from the next, from like your friend's house. Yeah, that's like that's like an hour outside of Chicago, easy. So let me tell you about South Side, okay? I mentioned this before. A couple miles from my house, my buddy calls me one night and says, I'm watching someone drag a carpet with feet sticking out of it wow. in his alley. Literally, I'm like, yeah, so not that far away. In suburbs, I'm talking to my buddy. I got, I got, I got, it was, a, it was, it was my second car ever, a Dodge Neon. And I'm like, let's go skate in the city. We're going to go to, I think, the Wilson Skate Park. So I like driving down Roosevelt okay. straight from, because it goes from Glen Ellen, it goes straight into the city. Oh, cool. And then Roosevelt's like 12 south. So you do go through the, through the south side. So uh, we do this. And then I decided to turn left on some straight camera board. It was probably Halstead or something, maybe Harlem. And uh, the dude started hyperventilating. Really? When he when he realized where we were. Whoa. And I'm, I'm laughing. And he was like, why are we here, dude? What are, we, what are, you, are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, bro, we're driving. We're fine. And I'm like, the only thing you got to know is when you pull up to a car at a red light, you don't pull up real close. You leave a full car length. <sighs> yeah. Because what they do is, once you get boxed in, they run up to your car and, 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 and mug you. Oh, that seems fine. That's why you always leave a full car length. So if you see someone run up to your car, you speed out and go for it. I was like, we're going to be fine, bro. But he was freaking out. So now, th this was somebody who was from the suburbs, who knew the reality of the city of Chicago and the gun violence, Chirac, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was not happy about me taking, like, I'm from the city, dude. And I'm, you know, and, and, and I know people who are way more, way more reckless than I was. But my, my ultra progressive friends from the city, I'd be like, Straight up, man, I tell you what, come with me to the south side where I grew up. We'll go for a walk. How does it sound? Gone. Huh. Won't respond. Radio silence. They know. Yep. They virtue signal on Facebook all this time, but they, they, like, they like to say things like, only white people are racist. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, you, want to, you want to take a trip with me to, to like these certain neighborhoods, man? And you want, I'll give you a lesson on, on, on racism. Yeah. Chicago is a very, very horrifyingly racist place. It's segregated. It's, 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 it's nasty. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it's not even about... It, it's 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 just bad neighborhoods. Yeah, it honestly feels like there's a an air of like a war on white people right now. It's like if you're white, it's like you're just wrong. Well, the argument is that your pure existence is offensive and racist. It's been that way for a long time. It's 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 been growing in comedy, and it and it starts with white people recognizing that you know I, I think this was probably you know, following civil rights, you're, you're, in, you're in a dominant position. You know, there's, 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 I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it's fair to call it white privilege. Okay. I think it's majority privilege and there's generational wealth and a bunch of other factors that play a role in it. But you started getting self-deprecating comedians who it's fine to make fun of white people because you are white. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's evolved into everybody pile on the white people all the time and anything else is offensive. Right. And, it, and now it's getting twisted and weird where Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben Rice, it was literally, it's a, it's an Im, it's a picture of a farmer. Yeah. From, uh, he was a farmer in 1946. That's the image they, 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 they used. He's got to go. Mr. Clean, the white dude, shaved head, <laughs> he's all right. That's how weird it's getting. It is weird. So it's all these the, inversions. The, 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 yeah. the, the the war on white people narrative is kind of a weird narrative. It was popping up for a while. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think it's that, I don't, I don't like framing it that way. I don't see it that way. What I see is racial identitarianism, period. And and so let me, let me break this down. Okay. It's not so much that it's a war on white people. It's the racialization of everything. And the reason Good I point. think that, but, it, but it's Asians, you know what I mean? It's. It's it's racial stereotyping of all races. Yeah. So naturally, you get the evolution of it's okay to make fun of white people, and now you're going to get white people feeling like they're being attacked simply based on the color of their skin. Yep. But then no, I, they they are literally getting attacked, like physically attacked. Yep. A, yeah. Well, you got to be careful about this stuff too. The videos we see, and there's a lot of them mm -hmm. of white people just being attacked. Mm -hmm. Those probably aren't new. Okay. That's the th and and. That's not better. I'm not saying it's better. Yeah, like, I'm saying you have to be careful with this idea that it's it's a new thing that white people are now being attacked. I, I'm, bro, I'm, you go to the south side of Chicago. I'll tell you. I'll tell you all about. But it, it's not. I, it, I've I've been attacked. You've been shot at. I have. <laughs> that that was not a race thing though. Right. But I have other situations that were complete. I I told you about my uncle. Like I lost my uncle because yeah, he was dude. a white man, and they thought that he had money because he was white, mm -hmm. and he got shot and killed. Yep. And it's like. Did that make me a racist? No, but this is not this, at all. What's, but what, it exists. I see it. I know it exists. I'm not going to let it change me, though. Yeah. The scary thing about what the left is doing is that it's creating white identitarianism, mm -hmm. which was like going away. Yeah. After civil rights and you know the the, the uh, loving the Virginia, and then other provision, you know, other amendments that have been made over the past several decades. We were truly getting to a point where race, it was considered, uh, you know, taboo to use that in, in, as a pretext for anything. Yeah. And it became a secondary, it became an afterthought. You still had comedians who would bring up race and make these points. And people recognized there was, a, there was a lot we had to do. But we were getting away from using race as a pretext for anything. Yeah. The left brought it back. And when they started normalizing the, 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 the belittling and the insulting of white people. Yeah. It made a lot of... Uh, it, it created an incentive for many young white people to form a racial identity group. And then you saw the rise of the alt-right. That's a good point. So, the, However, the issue, though, is what they're doing in California is it's not about white people. It's about them controlling and segregating everybody. For yep. whatever reason, I don't know. Yeah, they want to keep us separated so we don't, we don't rise up and take over the establishment that has kept us in control for so long. It's, it's almost blaringly obvious to me now. So I, they yeah. don't they don't want us together. They For don't sure. want us to to rise because we'll take over. That's what we need to do. We need to take over. Well, Trump is a populist. And that's why they hated him. Yeah. Bernie was the left populist, but Bernie played ball in two seconds. Yep. That's, yep. that's he right. immediately. You know, Bernie Sanders said on the debate stage, and I love telling this to people because they don't believe me. If you're white, you don't know what it's like to be poor. Yep. That's ridiculous. There was a, there's a quote going around from a French far left uh, political leader. And he said, the people who believe in white privilege never met a poor white person. And I'm like, that's like a, that's like a far leftist in France. What's up with that? What wow. the heck? Why, why is France. America so twisted and broken? Well, you know, I think we know. We talked about it, the addiction. It's the, it's the mental break. It's, it's funny to me the, that, the, 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 it's so much more than just that, too. Right. There's so many things. This cog, of this wheels. There's so many wheels in this society that we have, and they're all getting all misshapen. But the, they're still turning, but they're getting morphed and blobbous gross it's decay it, it's decaying it's yes complicated. agreed reminds me of like playing you know link to the past or something okay and you're like in a room and the floor starts falling out mm. that is an amazing game it's yeah. a great game great game but i'm imagining like the floor just goes and you have to like run and you're running and the floor's falling behind you yep. and it feels like, like that's nightmare. what's happening yep that's like we're true. watching the whole structure and system just start falling apart and i think it, it, it's like a zombification a rot a decay a breakdown whatever you want to call it but the but I do want to I want to I do want to stress the point about what 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 they are doing with race, and someone when I pointed out to one of my friends that they were they've repealed the civil rights legislation they voted to repeal it in in California and what that means, I said well I do think 
one of their preliminary arguments is that they need to be able to discriminate based on race in order to create equality. And, you know, so that's what, that's what their argument is. The, what they've argued specifically is affirmative action. They're trying to they're trying to use affirmative action as justification for repealing all civil rights law in the public sphere. The argument is universities have too many Asians. Hmm. So we need to be able to stop Asians from getting in. So stop stop uh, rewarding people on their merit and just give it to them on their color of their skin. Yep. And and lighten their workload based on the color of their skin. And yep. that's, now you're getting it. that's racist. Yeah, man. Of course it is. The assumption that a certain race couldn't do it. Yeah, it's insane. And they're not. And, and belittling. Yep. I'd be pissed. Yes, I'm, I'm white. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't go to college. I got lucky and, and knew someone amazing like Tim Pool called me up and said, hey, you want to do a show with me? And I, this is where I am. You know, it's like, but basing anything like that on the color of your skin is just, it it blows my mind away. It's like the fact yeah. that people are okay with it, a minority. It's, saying, it's, it's more like, the, hey, the, you know what? You're You're less than us now, so you don't have to do as much. It's, it's like, it's, how belittling is that? Man, they, I'd be pissed. They yeah. don't just think it's okay. They are actively trying to make it happen because I think it's good. Amazing. <sighs> so, but, but this is the main point. It's it's about all of the races. I, I don't think it's an attack on any one race. I think it's literally them being like, we want to make sure you're all digitized into nice little, nice little packages where we can separate you and, and, and control which group goes where. Mm-hmm. So when they say and we can't have... for who? The, the craziest thing about Asians... When they say there's too many Asians in the university, a lot of my progressive friends go, well, it is true. There's like a disproportionate amount of Asians. And I said, what does that mean? What Asian? Yeah. Indian, Chinese, Laotian, Vietnamese, Mm -hmm. Korean, Japanese, Filipino. Come on, come on. Malaysian. They have no idea what that means. They don't. Yeah. They don't have any clue. So you're telling me that you've taken half the planet, (laughs) put it onto one continent (laughs) and then said this entire ethnic region that the Western uh, Eastern Hemisphere is now one group insane wow yeah so i have to wonder what their real motivations are when they when they try and argue that a poor vietnamese immigrant is the same as a wealthy indian uh wealthy indian immigrant Mm -hmm. right or a poor uh vietnamese you know kid born in america second generation growing up in the ghetto they say well you know no matter how hard he works we're not gonna let him go to harvard amazing they're it's like they're trying to create a caste system and they found their in. Mm-hmm. Seems like it. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune in to this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all in the next episode.